In this final video for both the chapter and the course, we're going to be finalizing the look of the guard piece that we've been modeling by adding some extra edge loops to the geometry in order to control how subdivision smoothing is working. To do that, let's select our mesh in the viewport, select the edit poly modifier in the stack, and then jump into edge subobject mode. Let's select what would normally be all of our vertical edges on the original piece. And I say would be because of course not all of them are vertical anymore. And then coming to the loops panel, shift click to open up the connect tools CADA. In fact, let's also hit F4 in order to better see our edges in the viewport. With just a single connect being added, let's hit OK. And then whilst pressing the Alt key, drag a marquee to deselect the horizontal pieces here. This means we can come to the edit panel to turn on the constrain to edges option, and then use the scale tool to straighten the selected edges by scaling along the Z or Z axis. Remembering of course to reselect just the edge loops that we deselected and do the same there. Only this time, of course, scaling on the X axis. With the move tool engaged, let's select one set of these new edge loops at a time and then drag them in towards the center of our shape until we essentially form a second or outside square at the crossing point here. Again, we need to reselect each of the edge sets that we have created and do the same with those. Next up, we need to select all of the internal edges that we have here Shift click again on the connect tool in the loops panel. And with the segments value set at two, let's use the pinch spinner to tighten things up, setting this to a value of around about 80 or so. As we can see on the reference, these internal angles are a bit sharper than the external ones, but I'll leave it up to you as to whether or not you want to build that detail in. If we come out of subobject mode now and left click in the viewport in order to deselect everything, you can see that we've created a nice looking guard for ourselves. One thing I am noticing though, is that the bars are probably looking a little too rounded. Again, this can come down to artistic choice, but if we wanted to flatten those out a little bit more, then we could select the guard and come back into the edit poly modifiers edge subobject mode, pressing F4 as we do. Let's select one of the edges on the top here and then after pressing Alt and R to ring select, shift click on the connect tool. Let's add two segments with maybe just a little bit of pinch to position. And once we hit OK and back out of subobject mode again, you can see that we get a bit more of an angular look to the metal. And again, we would need to repeat this process to any other areas of the guard that we felt needed it. In order to go ahead and rotate this piece into place, we will need to center up the pivot point. And so with it selected, let's jump into the hierarchy tab, click the effect pivot only button, and then hit the center to object option. With that, we can engage the rotate tool using the E key and then rotate by either 45 or minus 45 degrees. Once we exit isolate mode now, and with the help of video editing, pull all of our pieces into their proper place, we have a fairly decent looking Mark V diving helmet. Now, of course, we haven't modeled everything that we see in the viewport here, but everything was created using the exact same techniques and tools that we have been using in this course, just repeated over and over again. Indeed, if you wanted to go ahead and hide everything that you haven't already modeled and then have a go at creating those as well, based solely on the reference image, then that would certainly be really good practice for you.